This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about La Bête Humaine from, uh, from 1938, directed uh-huh. by Jean uh-huh. Renoir. Who? Jean Renoir. Who? No How tagline. How many Renoirs is this? I don't oh. know. Too many. Too many. No tagline? No tagline. Okay. Synopsis. On board a train bound for the port city of Le Havre, France, mm-hmm. railroad station master Rubard murders Grand Morin, who seduced his beautiful young wife, Severine. Engineer mm-hmm. Jacques Lantier, stuck in Le Havre while the train is being repaired, also begins a passionate affair with Severine, who tries to entice the handsome stranger to murder her controlling husband. However, Lantier has a secret urge of his own that changes everything. Um, did it change everything? I didn't think it changed much <laughs> at all. No, not really. A lot of that is they they didn't talk about the trains as much as I thought they should. I mean, they mentioned there was a train bound for the for the Havre. But did they mention? That this this entire movie was because John Gabin wanted to make a movie about trains. <laughs> Is that what you learned from now deceased Peter Bogdanovich? No. <laughs> well, didn't your eyes light up though when you saw the only special feature on the Criterion Channel for this film was a eleven minute long rambling of Peter Bogdanovich, may he rest in power, um, <laughs> and uh, him talking uh-huh. about how you are up. It was uh, going into darkness. And this film reflected the, the tone of that. The uh, mm-hmm. 1930s um, uh, poetic realism uh, in the mm-hmm. French uh, cinema at the time. At the time. I uh, I did. And, and that at one point he describes it as, the film as a, a Renoir extraordinarily organic. Isn't it all extraordinarily organic and i mean he, if you really and, think about it and then he adjusts his neckerchief <laughs> his ascot yeah that's the hu- pr- hu- correct hu- one for it. human interest human interest i did think it was um uh f- i mean fitting for us that the only criterion extra was a bog thing because it's like if we put him down we might as well try to bring him back up for one week at least you know from the from the ground yeah, yeah. So, anyways, could have mentioned more trains, but um, okay. Oh well. That's that's our uh, review of the synopsis of. Could have been more trains. Movie. Could have been more trains. Good night. <laughs> Good night. I mean, I actually, I, I'll tell you what I think about this movie later. But my genuine opinion was, could have could have used more trains. Uh, I I wouldn't disagree. Yeah. So, uh, le bet humain. Do you know what that translates to? Uh, the human butt, I think, is uh, what that is in French. It's it's my favorite spot removal in green in Magic: The Gathering, the Beast Within. It's not the human butt. No. Uh, so this is based on the writing of one Emile Zola. I love Emile Zola. He's one of my favorite guys. He's a great guy. One of my all times. <laughs> How many? How many? You know, uh, how many Emil Azoles do you have over on that bookshelf, RJ? I, that's that's the entire bookshelf, bud. Wow. I don't know if I, it's the whole thing. So it's so I, it's so it's uh, you have Perks of a Wallflower and uh, all Emil Zola all the time. Are, have you ever yeah. seen? Have you ever seen in the previous year, uh, 1937? There was a little movie that came along starring Paul Money, the life of Emil Zola. Did you notice, RJ? Uh, yeah, it's got Paul Mooney in it, right? Yep. I love it. I love that one. Yeah, I also really liked him. Uh, I liked uh, his debut in um, The Winter Soldier, you know, Armin Zola. Uh, he was great in that as well. Do you remember Arnim, Arnim Zola, Jared? I do. But but did Armin Zola ever win Best Picture? Maybe. Mm-hmm. I can't say for sure. Can you? I can't. He didn't. Don't lie. He, he didn't. Either. He didn't. He didn't win it. But Emil Don't Zola lie. did never won one himself. <laughs> but uh, a movie about him did, and that's why I've seen it, and that's why I went Emil Zola. I know about this guy. But you know, one thing I just mm-hmm. learned is that the uh, 
uh, Park Chan Wok movie, Thirst is loosely based on an Emil Zola story from nine, from eighteen sixty seven. Uh, really? Therese Rakin. Really, I've had that movie in my Creeptober list for like six years in a row, and I've never, <laughs> I still haven't watched it. Yeah, I just can never get to it because it's like, was it like three hours or something? And I'm always just like, oh. Hmm. Oh. Never bring myself to it. So Two sorry. hours and thirteen minutes. What uh, thirst? Yeah, it's still a long movie. Like during Creeptober, are you gonna watch a two-hour, thirteen-minute movie? No fucking chance. So, as a big Emil Zola expert, uh, you're obviously familiar with Le Rougeon Macart, the uh, series of books. I believe there is twenty oh, yeah. of those. Oh yeah, I got the I got at least sixteen of them. Uh, do you have I'm any... Still waiting for the other. Oh yeah, <laughs> still waiting for it to come out. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's twenty of them. Uh, do you have any favorites? Nana, uh, Germanel, La Terre, La Rive, um, L'Argent. I think mm. Prolapse. What about Prolapse? La, is la, my favorite. La Prolapse. La Debacle. Le prolapse. Well, Debacle is that like uh, Lady le... by a Debout de Bonillon? Le Doctor Pascal. Dr. Pascal's fine. I think it, that one's overrated. Okay. People like it way more than it actually is, so, like, so, what it's worth. So you didn't even wait to read them all in order? No. Well, I was trying to read them in publication date. So, like, not in chronological. And I know it's, yeah. like, one of those things. Like, I, I feel like that's the right way to do it is the publication mm, date, what, not the like, chronological. Like, like, reverse publication date. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Those are the last ones of the series. As you know, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, of course, of course. But I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a Zola purist, um, Mm -hmm. is what some people have described me as, like an Mm. enthusiast potentially. So, as a fan, as a big fan, what did you think of this letter, this this quote to Zola, for from Zola that is then punctuated because actually, so it opens up with the title cards, which are actually really nice. They have yeah, a nice yeah. translucence quality, hand drawn, looks great. And then mm-hmm. it goes to this scroll of a quote about what the movie is going to be. And then yeah. the signature of Emil Zola comes up, and then then a photo of Emil Zola comes in. And this music is just like uh France's greatest artist. I um I liked it quite a bit. And because I wasn't sure if it was what the movie was about, I, I was kind of just like, are they just saying Zola's an alcoholic? I was like, that's fine. That's kind of cool, too. That's pretty, that's kind of metal. But uh, yeah, I, I liked it. I thought, uh, I, I, I liked the soft open with the, they're like, this is Zola country, baby. And, well, like, and you're going to, you're going to know about it. The bog monster uh, would disagree. Mm. He says it's the weakest part of the film. Well, Bog's a wiener, and we've talked about this many times. He's a, he's a little wiener, and I, I'm not, you know, even even in death, he's still a wiener. So whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's all in, it's all there uh, in footage. You can see for yourself, folks. Make your own conclusion. Mm-hmm. Sure. Or not. Uh, so at that point, so after this photo of Emil Zola fades out, we get a hard slam and cut to a raging fire of a train being fed with coal. And we get, not not kidding here, RJ, five whole minutes of sweet train footage. Uh, yeah, um, we got five. But as I said before, could have been more. Could have been more. Well, so we could get have... this whole, we get the entire process of this train getting operated. We get, we, we see Jean Gabin uh, being a train engineer. Uh, which, so apparently... I didn't look into this movie at all other than just the train aspect about it. Yeah. And uh, I actually thought that was really nice where John John Gabin, John Gabin was kind of just like, hey, I want to make a movie about uh, trains Could, uh, where I can be a train man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I liked that quite a bit. He just wanted to drive a train for a while. And um, I don't know. I think that's pretty, it's pretty nice because I I think that's some real man stuff. That's some Lee Marvin stuff. You know what I mean? Train Where he's action. like, hey, he's like, I want to make a movie about a train and I want to be the train. And you went, everyone went, okay, sure. You can be the train if you want. That's cool. So uh, I like that quite a bit. I like the train open. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, well shot and there's no music over it or anything like that. It's just 
the sound of the train moving and really nice clear footage. Uh, the restoration of this looked pretty good. Whatever version of copy there is. This, of course, also, RJ, you forgot to mention, Studio Canal comes <sighs> ringing into your ears loudly. Yeah. It is, though. It is different from the traditional Studio Canal intro that we've seen many, many times. Uh, not the one... Not... Bloop. <laughs> I I can't stand Studio Canal. This one's not as bad as like like where it's like the the clouds and it's like a balloon. It's like it's like like party sounds are like 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 pole whistles. Mm-hmm. It's too much. Get too out of here, Studio Canal. Too much. Too much. So the Nobody destination like. of this train, RJ, is Le Havre, which is also a Uwe Rosenberg game. You know about board games. Uh, I know about Uze Rosenberg, sure. Mm-hmm. There's a movie doesn't. that Criterion has also put out with the same title, La Havre. La Havre? I know that one. Yeah, we'll know about it. We'll know about La Havre. It's a harbor, RJ. You know that? I, uh, so, I've heard. I've yeah. heard. It's uh, before we started this. I'll tell that story when we get to that movie, actually. Okay. I've heard about that movie before we started the podcast for a reason. Right. So. So. Uh, there's, yeah. a, there's a woman. She's complaining that a guy has a dog that he's trying to take onto a train. Yes. No. What's that lady's problem? Why? Why does she let that dog on? I don't know. You know, if I was a lazier man, I'd say you know Karens. Yeah, I I wouldn't say that either. It's just it's like, what's your deal? Dog's not going to be in your cart. Who? Why do you give a shit? It's the principle you know of the matter. Mean? But dogs can't ride trains. Anyone can ride a train. That's not Fuck, the you po- can put a not, fish on not, there. That's not the want. policy. It's not the policy. You can put a fish on there if you really care. That's, excuse or me. Or if you. Excuse me. Well, anyways, that's what I mean. Dogs. Leave them. Leave the dog be. So anyway, yeah. so the station master he has to go yeah. and address this complaint, and the yeah. man with the dog. Well, he's a he's a French rich asshole kind of guy. Sugar tycoon. Yep. And he's like, well, you know, if you don't let me get my way, I'm going to have to bring this up with the Grand Master of Trains. And uh, that is um, Thomas the Train? Thomas the Train. Or what, what's the name of that, you know? You know that train guy? Th- Thomas the Engine. That could? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so this is this is the inciting incident. <laughs> Uh, Jean Gabin has nothing to do with any of this. Him and his uh, his colleague, they're like, they're just talking about mechanical problems on their train, and then there's this lady complaining about a dog, and this gets kicked upstairs with this complaint, and now the guy, the grant, the uh, the station master, he's all like, I'm worried about my job. This this might not work out well for me, and so he has to go tell his wife, uh, played by uh, Simon Simon. Uh, who mm. is sporting a very fine little Criterion cat that she's just petting? Yeah, yeah, I saw that kitten, that Criterion that, cat, and yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, just a nice little kitty. Nice, nice little, little kitty, just kind of hangs fluff out. Ball. Yep. yep. And you know it's a kitten because it's sleeping, and you can just hold it, do whatever. Because kittens, infamously too tired to do anything. They're all tuckered out. Infamous about how tired they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's uh, cool. Uh, uh, so Simone Simon, she gets to uh, tell us a little bit how the Grand Master is her godfather. But everyone mm-hmm. else, everyone was afraid of him, but not her. They had a special relationship. What do you mean? Well, we'll get there, RJ. We'll get, mm. we'll get there. <laughs> so back to the train boys. Uh, Gavin mm. and his uh, his co-engineer. They've got some downtime because some repairs have got to get done and there's this like bullshit where apparently these guys have to pay for their own supplies they have to pay for their own oil and if there's and any coal. yeah they have to pay for this on the cells it's like whoa 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 what what kind of scam we run in here i don't know capitalism, what capitalism this... jared well yeah but it's like whoa i think i think these dudes need to unionize <laughs> this is this is some real bullshit that is, uh, I thought, I like that where they're like, well, if you go with the wind, you save money because you can reuse that coal yeah. later. And then you go, what? But before all that, I liked that hot plate action when they're all cooking their own mm. breakfasts and stuff like that. Although John Gaben. Talking he, about that uh, ham. Talking about that ham. Yeah. And that dude told, he's like, can I have some of your ham? And he takes all of it, the greedy pig. He takes all that guy, John Gaben's ham, and ham for his eggs. And you're just like, fuck. 
I would be pissed off if he took all my ham. But um, John Gaben opens that can, puts it in the pot, and then uh, he he like immediately eats a piece out of it. I was like, buddy, that's not even been in there for an entire minute. It's like you got to warm that shit up a little. Hey, when you're just... having to pay to operate the train you drive for someone else, yeah, I guess. I mean, you got you got to uh, cut corners where you can. You build up a mighty appetite between stops. That's true. I just want to say I liked I liked the scene of dudes just cooking breakfast with each other because dudes rock and they like to cook breakfast. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're all for dudes. Dudes rock, baby. Tender. It's about tenderness, yeah. Jerry. Did you forget? Tenderness. You forgot. Tender trains. Yeah. So, anyways, paying for supplies. You said yes. Um, and then so, buddy goes home to hang out with his his wife. And his then wife. Jean Gabin, he's going to go pay a visit because he's like, well, I can't go anywhere for a little bit. Go wait for the train to get fixed. So I'm going to go visit some old family friends just just down the line. And mm-hmm. uh, he he does. Uh, and he comes across an assault of a the family friend's daughter who's all grown up. And she's like mm-hmm. washing off her feet on a boat. And these two uh, dudes Selfie. just show up and they're like, hey, we're watching you. And she's like, hey, lay off. I'm like, oh, yeah. And they just, like, they go for her. Like, in this very, like, 1938 um, kind of <laughs> polite way where they're like, hey, we're going to get you. And then she just, mm-hmm. like, shoves him into the water. And he's just, like, stunned. And it's, like, crisis averted. Okay, crisis rape the- averted. Yeah, rape averted. And that's, like, you're like, oh, that's good. And then Jean Gabin comes along this and he's like, oh, oh wow, look at you. And you're like, oh, she mm-hmm. kind of knows him, but she's acting real weird about that. She's like, hey, I don't, I, I, I've really grown up, and I'm like, man, you're a real, a real hot old man, Jean. Real, that's a real Joe Biden thing. Hey? It's like, man, you've sure matured in all the right places. Remember when he said that? <laughs> Did he? I, he said something pretty similar. Is that <laughs> was this a meme? <laughs> that's hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I don't, I, Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you've, uh, vocalized it to help further it <laughs> along. If, if you've whether or not you said it or not, it doesn't matter. It's neither well, here nor, it's neither here nor there. This is a fictional podcast, so it can't be taken oh. legal, in any, by any legal, legal standards. It's fiction. I, I understand. I understand. It's a work of fiction. So anyway, so, uh, Jean Gabin and this girl, they're hitting it off and they kind of, uh, go by like kind of like that little hill area that's like right by a train track and mm-hmm. uh they, they start you know making out but Jean oh. Gabin blacks out and he just starts strangling her <laughs> and, and and luckily for everyone i guess uh the sound of the train comes along and it snaps him out of it because we find out uh that this guy, he's got his, his family, his like hereditary like genes or something like that. Have like his family were all like drunkards, and now he's inherited all this, and it's <laughs> and it's manifested that he has an uncontrollable blackout urge to just murder women. But that's why he's a train conductor, you see. And so because the sound of the train keeps his mind clear, it's the only thing. It's the only time he can like truly be calm is working with the trains because he gets he gets away from those trains and near a woman watch out he can't help himself that's the movie this is this is a uh this is some real 19th century stuff here how would you describe those actions in his character is there a word for it for for a man of that sort do you know what i mean is there a word for that kind of guy who is violent towards well, women it, or I, Wow, inexplicable reasons. Well, but he, but he's not guilty of it himself. He because he's because well, see that's the thing is like he kind of is absolved of it. But it's the beast the, that is alcoholism. He's, it's the beast within. He's not making a choice. He's, he's, he, I mean, it's a different kind of involuntary, RJ. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Interesting. So anyway, this is like kind of played off. It's like, well, that's just what he has to deal with, and uh, people are going to have to have to learn to deal with me. Which my note here is like, what an odd film. <laughs> it's like, what this is a this is a hell of an approach here, Emil Zola. It's a real uh, if you can't handle me at my worst, you so, don't deserve me at my best kind of. Yeah. Thing. So uh, yeah, I guess Jean Renoir wrote this screenplay, like having read the book fifteen years earlier, and kind of just did it off the cuff. But when it came to uh, Simone Simon's dialogue, it was, it's almost like verbatim mm. from the book, allegedly. 
Uh, I mean, I could see like real old ass movies. It's like, why would they change anything? You just kind of leave it as as it is, right? Yeah. Saves you work. Well, apparently this uh, this version of the story uh, strips out a lot of the melodrama from the original story. If you can imagine. Well, this, I mean, this is pretty it's already stuff. brimming with it. Mm, oh, yeah, it's brimming. Brimming. Yeah. Uh, you know I mean? So uh, the Simone character, she goes to pay the Grand Master uh, a visit, but then you get some like suggestions. It's like, oh, there's some little bit of funny business going on here, and then she funny goes business. Yeah, because they, they just she, they, uh, her and her husband they go off to Paris and they're going to meet up at this room after the after things are sorted out and they get back together and everything's like, huh, that this is all working out great. But then there's these these alluding things of like, huh, what actually happened? What did you have to do? But then he finds out this this husband, this guy, uh, Robard, he's like, finds out my wife, she she's banging her godfather. Just a bit. Just a little bit. what they say. And they're uh, like, oh, it's just a little bit. Yeah, it's a, it's a touch. And so, yeah. well... I'd say that for the most part in this movie, uh, especially compared to the Fritz Lang version of the movie, he uh, he seems like fairly likable <laughs> up until I guess this turn, um, mm-hmm. and then suddenly it's like you know he becomes enraged, gets a little uh, a little a little beady, gets gets angry because that's just mm-hmm. uh, you know what happens here in the movie, and you're like oh damn, but now he's like well. Oh, I can't take it out on her, but I'm going to get her to help me get rid of this this guy. We're going to kill him. <laughs> You're like, oh shit! All right, this is all very. Well, this is all f- normal, is it? I mean, it depends. It, I think I think some have described it as the new normal. Yeah. So so again, once again, the beast within is revealed. The the the, 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 fa- the facade slips. And, it, and, I then, see. and then, and then it's like, oh, this guy's a piece of shit. And now he's like, and, and, and he, wants, he wants a little bit of revenge. Yeah. What kind of revenge would you do? Well, if if like in this movie, um, I don't know. If we're going to write, write a letter saying, mm-hmm. "Hey, meet me, so and so, such a place on this train. We're going to do this all. We're going to hook up again." But it's all plot because you're going to get him on the train, and while on the train, you're just going to show up and uh, stab the guy. Hmm. <laughs> That's the plan. It's not much. It's not a very good plan. It's a plan. I mean, what even is a good plan? Do you know what I mean? <sighs> well, not this one. So these two are coming back on the train where they kill the Grand Master Jean Gabin's character. Uh, he gets on this train after visiting the family friends and. You know, almost uh, murdering the family friend's daughter. Something's in his eye. Uh, he happens to see these two coming back from the scene of the crime, but he's like he recognizes his old pal, and uh, he's like, "Well, I'm kind of. I think your wife's. I mean, in his head, he's like, "Well, I think your wife's kind of hot. So I, mean, I don't. I don't want to give him up to the police. That would be cool, you know? Because I, mean, I work with this guy. He's a good dude." <laughs> That that maybe killed our boss, maybe. And he said it like that too. He was like, "I think your wife's like kind of hot." Eh? Uh, well, he doesn't say that, that, but but he tells her, "Hey, I think you're pretty." It's the implied part. It's the implied part. Yes, I see. I see. So this is about the forty minute point of this movie, and then the next yeah. forty odd minutes, forty five minutes, are, is this next phase of this plot, which is now, well. He saw us. And but, what are we going to do now? Well, but now she's got an idea. She's like, well, this this husband of mine who, like, beat me up, this guy's, like, kind of a dangerous asshole and also mm. n- knows too much and might set me up for this. And I, I don't like him anymore. So I'm going to make eyes at Jean Gabin. And maybe I can encourage him to kill my husband for me. So I'm out from under all this nonsense. Um, yeah. That's kind of where it goes. Very yeah, slowly. Yeah. Oh, there's an inquest? There, there's uh, a, there, yeah, there, where people are being interviewed, and they uh, try to pin it on uh, a poacher guy who's played by Jean Renoir. Yeah. Uh, I did not know that that was played by Jean Renoir. Jean Renoir. Mm-hmm. It is indeed him. So... 
he just wanted to get in there for a little bit, or Renoir, I guess, show off some of his acting chaps. Hmm. Okay, but That's fine. Yeah, anyway, my, my next note really here though is, is a very very extended process of Gabin being worked on and into a into a shoot into killing mm-hmm. uh, uh, her husband. And and it's like lots yeah. of scenes of like in train yards and elsewhere and like talking about it like yeah hit him in the back of the head with a pipe, <laughs> but like there, the, there's just, a lot of talk. This whole like thing about him blacking out and killing people doesn't get really brought up until it it, it shows up like in the very end of the movie, and it's because he's like he kind of like chickens out. He's like oh I'm gonna do it oh no I can't I know the guy. <laughs> it's like yeah. Like you do. He said, there's a guy I've met yeah. before. I can't kill him. Yeah. Come on. He says it like that, too. He goes, come on. So, yeah, to me, a lot of this just felt like I am being shown things, and that is enough to be convinced of these things needing to happen. But sure. It, but it doesn't feel inevitable. It feels like, oh, this just feels like a presentation very formulaic mm-hmm. of like, oh, I'm, they're trying to get to this point, but it's just like I don't really, I'm not really getting convinced here mm-hmm. but by either of these performances or these, or at least the characters. I think, the, I think this is where the movie felt really underwritten to me. Anyway. Yeah, and then <clears throat> finally, uh, so, now, so now it's like she's doubting his prowess of being able to kill on her behalf, and then there's a party where it's like, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm really, I'm really going, I'm really going to kill him. But then, uh, before he can go and do this and fulfill this, he gets a little blackouty and he proceeds mm. to kill her, stabbing her to death. It's just an oopsie. A little oopsie at, at or while the train party's happening. Yeah, he can't help himself, man. And then he he walks out. He just take, he takes off, um, and, yeah. and, and no one knows where he is. It seems like oh. He's dead, and but it's kind of left in the way where it's like, oh, it seems like the wife might be framed for this, or left kind of thinking that she did it because of like money being taken out of. It's like all vague. There's no real conclusion to it, but it looks like it would appear that there's money being taken, or that there's a knife involved, and maybe it's this marital spat. It's like kind of left open ended. Um, yeah. And so Jean Gabin gets ready to go to work. He uh, he shows up fully dressed from the night before at the train at the start of his shift. He's like, "Hey, here's your overalls. We gotta get going." Okay, and he gets on there and he tells his uh, colleague, "Yeah, I, uh, I I I killed her last night. I'm surprised the police haven't come here to arrest me yet." And the guy's like, "No biggie, no no problem, fam." He he says something kind of like, "He's like, well, the way you described it, it makes sense." Yeah. He's like, "Anyone would have." I think that's like. That's literally a direct line. He's like, the way you described it, it makes sense. I mean, it's what you'd say perhaps in the moment if it wasn't like also this 1938 movie where it's like, hey, hey we'll, we'll deal with this later. We got a train schedule to keep up, my dude. Well, it was like the supply changer. You heard about the supply I, chain? I've heard all about it. Still hearing yeah. about it, even now. So trains. So, so trains, uh, Jean Gabin. Even now, though, he's on the train, which is the only thing that's soothed him up until this point. He he, mm-hmm. he he has an attack again, or or his guilt becomes so overriding that he strikes out at his colleague, knocks him back, and then jumps to his death, breaking his own neck. Train comes to a stop. He come, he gets off. He finds Jean Gabin's dead body. He's like, look how peaceful he looks. It's the most peaceful I've ever seen him. And the music goes, na, 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 na. the end. Um, trains, eh? Trains. Where's the <laughs> wanted more trains? Yeah, I did want more trains. So I will say this: I yeah. did not really care much for this movie, but I definitely liked it a little more after I watched the Fritz Lang American remake, Human Desire. <laughs> From ah. 1954, which oh man! You see, I I you made this available to me, but I uh, I unfortunately did not have the time to get it done within the last day and a half here. So I could you could you describe the Fritz Lang one to me a little bit? It's so it's the exact same plot, more or less, but okay. instead of this like thing about this compulsion to like strangle women, and this guy's also a Korean vet. <laughs> 
And I was like, oh shit, are they going to do like a PTSD a, thing? A, 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 a battle fatigue, shell shock yeah. thing? No, no, they're not. Uh, they He's just a guy. <laughs> and he doesn't have anything. Like, he, he, Glenn Ford doesn't do anything in this movie. He's just along for the ride. And he, it's like, it's very, it's way more film noir where he has. Um, control over himself but he's not trying to kill there's no impulse there's no like weird blind like rage or um compulsion that he can't control it's just like you know, he's just a guy and none of that comes up they, they completely remove that from the story and it's just like oh but, but so um the uh, Rabard character he in this movie is played like to the till like this guy is just a uh bellowing asshole guy who's like jealous that my, my girl's sleeping with my boss and, <laughs> and he's just like you're gonna do what i say like he's way more of like a heavy and played yeah again like over the top and uh it's yeah it's a film noir trapping with guys like well i, I saw something but i, didn't, I don't really want to say because i mean i think you're kind of a fetching young woman and you know mm. we, we work together on the trains so, so it, like it takes out it takes out, it's it's so much more straightforward. It takes out any of like the the I don't know the the flourishes of Renoir that like it made me appreciate those things way more. Sure, uh, because in that the Fritz Lang one, I mean, we, Fritz Lang's a a good dude. He's made some really great films, but this is sure getting later and later in his film career. And this this one in particular, I think I think the next couple of his are. A, better but yeah human desire i was just like fuck this movie kind of sucks because uh, yeah. it's just like, a completely compare contrast in terms of like nuance like nuance for a movie that i didn't even think that had that much nuance uh we see it stripped down to this and it's just how do you even put it if, if, if it's it doesn't like, have the Renoir cliche, touch. it doesn't have the renoir touch the, the renoir glaze and you know what? I, I felt like that was missing in the Criterion presentation of this even because last couple of Renoir we've been watching, uh, they usually lead in with the Jean Renoir presents and it's that picture of him like, oh. and there's always, there was usually like an intro. He's like, this was a movie I made. And he'll be like, it wasn't my favorite movie, mm -hmm. but it was a movie nonetheless. Yes. So Fritz Lang yeah. couldn't uh, keep up with that. Yeah, yeah. and Human Desire has got these like on the nose musical cues. The characters are on the nose, and oh, the 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 the, the, little, the misogyny ramped up even more somehow. Where Ooh. one guy goes, women have different faces, so women can tell. Or oh, sorry, it was actually a fe a, a female character who's saying yeah. this about men, saying women have different faces, so men can tell us apart. And it's like, I'm like, man, that's a that's a nasty little comment here. These, these are also such ugly characters, I guess. Or of course, after uh, she, yeah. after she's uh, the the wife's banged the grandmaster character, uh, she's like, I need to have a shower, <laughs> which is like, oh, <laughs> it's like, mm. a lot. yeah, it really uh, puts it into your imagination, RJ. And then of course the 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 husband character also goes, I got the leftovers, didn't I? Ah, uh, yeah. Gee. Garrett. No. Nasty, oh, nasty, Garrett. nasty little picture. Uh, so you're saying there's you preferred chance. the Fritz Lang one. You're saying there's a chance. <laughs> They're that... so different. Uh, and it's like, it's but, it's but at the end of the day, though, I think it's just kind of, but same. It's kind of an underwhelming story uh, that I think it could have been, could be done better. But when you're using yeah. the same reference material, I think, I think it's just, not not much, not much. It's not a redeeming Jean Renoir for me at this point. Uh, he's still uh, pretty average at best. Uh, he's the director of the river. He is the director of the river. I see. Yeah. I see. But um, so yeah, Jean Renoir. Here we are again. And your best uh, friend, my best friend, good mm -hmm. close personal friend, Jean Renoir. Mm-hmm. RJ, what did you think of The Beast Within? Could have used more trains. <laughs> my my main my main comment and critique and art like thought on this movie is is legitimately that I thought it could have used more trains. Um I don't know. I uh so I was watching this thing. I really like the intro. 
I like just the train the train stuff. I was like, that's cool. And then uh, I, I liked the. I, I honestly, I, I just wanted to. I, I'm kind of with John Gaben, where I was like, yeah, he should have just made a movie about him kind of riding the rails, like literally Lee Marvin style. You know what I mean? Emperor of the North style. That's what that movie's called, right? Emperor Hit, of the North. Is that? What, yeah, yeah, that's what it's called. Hitting dudes with chickens and stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, I did like. Uh, I wanted more of that. And all the other stuff was kind of like, yeah, uh, I didn't really care about the couple, like the lady and her husband, because that mm-hmm. it seemed like such a different movie where it's kind of like, oh, this lady's got her like her husband killed the dude and now she's going to get someone else. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's like I have seen that movie before, too. Um, and I know it's kind of like the the mesh of those things, but uh I kind of wanted to just separate. I just wanted, I just want to see this dude riding the riding the trains for a long time. I kind of would have liked that more. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't much care for the uh, the gene heredity induced alcohol induced <laughs> rage because I was kind of like, all right, this like is, <laughs> this is dumb. Yeah, and it was one of those things. It's like, do I care that much? No, but at the same time, I was like. It's pretty silly because like I actually like I actually had to rewind it for a minute because I didn't quite see his the explanation of why he had these rage fits. It just for a second like or maybe it's not even introduced at first, but like it took me a second to figure it out because I looked away for a second like you did in uh, the other movie earlier. And when I looked back, he was just choking her. And I was like, it's like, wait a second. It's like how the, I was like, how did we get here? I was like, why is he choking her all of a sudden? Uh, so I, I, I kind of, you know, I figured it out eventually. But I was like, oh, I was like, that's kind of silly. Um, it's fine, but it is silly. Uh, so you have that, which is whatever. Um, like I'm, this is this is a movie that I'm, I'm genuinely kind of just at a loss of what to talk about for it. Well, you... how about how about <laughs> when uh, apparently Pierre Bogdanovich said that the movie is set on a train that may be thought of as one of the main characters in the film. I I I can't I hate I hate when people describe stuff like that. It's like, oh, you know, in Rosemary's Baby, the apartment is like the main character, like the apartment building is the main character of that story. It's like, I know. <laughs> Sorry, are you? Uh, I know. Are I you? Are you? It. Are you asking? Do you have anything from the train's point of view? I would like to know if you have anything from the train's point of view, because that I'd be more interested in that. And that's what I'm saying. If there was a Thomas the Train thing where it's just about trains, sentient trains moving around, I think that would maybe be a better movie. And again, not that this is a outright. This is a, it's not a bad movie or anything like that. It's just like I don't care that much. Like I want more trains, Jerry. I want more pictures of John Gaben cooking up ham. <laughs> uh, he wasn't cooking the ham, but I'd like I'd like more stuff about him. So, anyways, that dead dude is. I don't know how it played out then, but you see this dude now. He's he's like slapping this girl around, calling her a slut, and like. He's just like, you slut. He's like, I'm going to kill him. And then he goes and kills the guy. And then you're just like, okay, are we, who are we rooting for here? And then like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, cause the girl's kind of there cause she has to be, but like, you're like, what are we, you're like, what are, what's our with end her, game in this uh, thing? With her asymmetrical smile. Uh, well, one the, side's, one yeah, side's like, little... one side she kind of like her eye, like, uh, her, yeah, it's very like, I'm not sure if it's uh She's playing into that. I'm, I'm not really f- too much too familiar with uh, uh, Simone Simon's uh, work, but in this, I think she, I felt like she was like really kind of like playing this like double sided nature thing yeah. with her uh, her smiling. Mm-hmm. There is um maybe maybe it's Jarrett. Maybe it's maybe it's like an allegory for like how she's playing like both sides of like the men for her own safety. Do you remember uh, her turn in Cat People? Yeah, I loved it. What about in The Devil and Daniel Webster? Oh, it was amazing. That's what I thought. I didn't, I mean, I obviously didn't make those connections, but what, as you say it now, it's like, oh, yeah. I, I, I kind of well, remember Well, I remember it from Cat People, which is a movie that yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm one of those people on record being like, I don't think this movie's that good. I love Curse the of the sequel. Cat People. Yeah. Curse of the Cat People is real good. That's right. 
real good. How, how does this compare uh, to a uh, previous Renoir entry, Boudou, Save from Drowning? Well, Boudou, always... that movie was also strange. That was the movie that kind of endorsed working through the no uh, as a, um, as an, again, a plot point. Because he kind of, Boudou forced himself on that lady and then, and then she fell in love with him. And it's like, is this the message that we want to send? Is this what we're going for? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, anyways, uh, what are we talking about? La bet Uma. Yeah. So his his um his inner turmoil stuff is pretty silly. Uh, I did like some of the shots. Like, there's actually one really nice shot in this when uh, it's like the puddle, and it's his reflection in the puddle, and then the camera kind of like turns like right side up, like it's upside down through the puddle, and then it kind of centers itself up i thought that was actually really cool when he's walking around with his like a uh, crowbar or whatever by contemplating he's like do i kill people do i not kill people i actually thought that scene was really cool but again because it took place on the the rail yards and i just wanted more train stuff uh but that shot do you, you know the one i mean right like the reflection in the puddle yep. that, that one was really good i like that one quite a bit uh i like that uh and there's some funny there's some funny dialogue in this movie, just like the interactions that people have. There's a talk of clout, which I thought was fu- like it is silly, <laughs> there's, but there's, I thought it was funny. You know, most movies could use a little bit more discussion about clout. Clout, I agree, I agree. But uh, it's got like some of those common trappings of like older things where it's like, I don't know, I know it's like romantic. But, like, all these interactions with people where it's, like, they're instantly, like, so drawn to each other. Like, when John Gabin's at uh, their house and then he's leaving and the guy's, like, the other guy's, like, oh, it's the door. Who could it be now? Mm -hmm. And he's, like, annoyed that someone's knocking on the door. And it's just, like, dude, people can, like, it's, like, if if the phone rang and someone was, like, oh, my God, what is it? And you're just, like, man, it's just a phone ringing. Um, but like when they go away, John Gibbons like, I will see you later. And then they kind of pull really close to each other. And they're like, basically like rubbing their noses on each other. Like, and you're just like, man, it's all right. You can relax. Like, you don't got to do that. Like, you don't got to be like that forward with it. So like that, I, I, again, I know why old movies have romanticism because it was, it's what they did. But, uh, I thought that part was kind of silly as well. Um, and then yet the ending is, uh, the ending is really bizarre. (laughs) Like, uh, well actually before that. So when that dude kills that guy, he hides all his stuff, but he hides his, the guy's wallet with all the cash in it under the floorboards. And it's like, at least take the cash out. It's like, I can understand why you can't pawn the watch because you would incriminate yourself, but you could have taken the cash. I guess he didn't need the cash. And that was the point. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, the ending is so... (laughs) It's so weird. He's like, yeah, so I killed a chick last night. And the dude's like, no way. He's like, yeah, but like, she kind of like did this thing I didn't really like get along with. And her husband was like kind of a bad dude. And then the guy's like, well, I mean, if you put it that way. I think and, I, like, he kind of, I think he kind of felt bad about killing that guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was a bunch like that. But it does, like it does honestly... He's kind of like, wow, I just killed some dude. And then the other guy, like, it's not like this, but it's essentially just, well, you know, it happens, man. And it's like the way you're telling me about it, who who wouldn't have done it? So he's like, I don't blame you. He's like, let's get this train moving. <laughs> he's like, okay. And then they go. And then it's just, woo, <laughs> right over the ledge. And then you go, okay, I guess that's the end of John Gabin. Mm-hmm. And then the movie's over. And then you go, okay. So again, we've had a long string of movies here where I go, it's not a bad show, but I don't particularly care. No. Oh, so also Human Desire. Um, so what happens at the end of this movie is uh, Jeff, or uh, the hero of the film, nothing, nothing happens. Uh, he just drives the train, and mm-hmm. in the back, uh, the the Robard character Carl. He just uh, murders his wife um, in a rage because they, they don't trust each other. And was it alcohol induced? No, no anger. He just kills her, and now he's like, "Uh oh, no getting out of this one." And then mm-hmm. Jeff's up front, just riding, driving the train, going, 
yeah, I'm going to go hang out with my uh, family friend's daughter now. Who mm. I bought a, like, Japanese kimono for. How many kimonos do you own, Jarrett? Zero. What? I'm sorry. Man of your stature? Man of my stature, even. With all the resources okay. I have, I, I don't have one. Okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just surprised is all. That's mm-hmm. fine. I know. Yeah. My, so my, anyways, my this... top knot might throw you off. Uh, samurai bun. That's what some people might call that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So n- neither one of us is, you know, like fiending to like wash this all over again, huh? All I could say is maybe we'll get them next time. Get them next time. You want to hear what uh, people are saying on Letterbox? Who hates this movie? Who they hate trains. They hate trains. They well, they hate they hate sure. the, they hate how they depicted the character. Ah, uh, okay. Of, of the train. Mm-hmm. Starring Burton and Caster. Uh, mm-hmm. James Vincent, one star. Great train shots. Great <laughs> cast. But Le Bit Human never connected with me as I never felt it came together into something satisfying or engaging. It's strange to say, considering it's genre and war, but this is the most disappointed I've been with a movie in some time. I got literally nothing out of this. It felt like a waste of time, which has prevented me from potentially wasting more time on Ren Warf movies. Some of this mm. stuff works for me, and some, like Le Behumain, feel like a black hole trying to suck my enthusiasm for cinema out of my soul. If it sounds like I hate this movie, it's because I do. <laughs> well, James Vincent, he's an uh, Australian film lover, just right near all of Um It's not bad taste. A lot of five star ratings for stuff. Some good stuff in there. Favorite films: Fallen Angels. That's the second week that's come up in favorite films. Late Spring, The Fog, and Blow Up. But here's where it gets interesting, Jared. Some one star films include The Patriot from Mel Gibson. Yes, The Patriot. Uh, Billy Madison and Deuce Bigelow. All movies that we've one way or the other talked about tonight. This person just really hates Rob Schneider. A lot of <laughs> one stars to Rob Schneider films for some reason. But Deuce Bigelow, 1999, year of best movies ever. And it's it's one of them. Right, here. Did you watch Killing Birds this week? I did not. Okay. You watched something with a similar poster. This Killing Birds has a similar poster. Okay. Anyways. How about so. film from men? Oh, <laughs> yeah. One and a oh. half stars. This is a lengthy one. Jean okay. Gabin, who I usually like, plays a train engineer who is a little withdrawn and talks about his train as his wife. It's true. In an early sure. scene, you find out that he has a history of illness, and when he visits an old flame, he seems to lack all social skills, but throws himself at her and kisses while she tries to escape crying. But the more he half rapes her, wow. Oh, uh, okay. The more he she melts, and in the end, she embraces him tenderly. Nice. Uh, I wonder how many nice. women. Yeah, I wonder how many women who have been badly treated because scenes like the 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 dice. Um. Uh. But yeah, film from men. But the embraces Bizarre. are then switched to neck choking. She can't breathe. He finally lets go of the panting girl and lies on the grass with a straw in his mouth and says something like, it's like it is. I get a little like this sometimes. And she just says, no danger, old man. You're fine. We should get married, right? This woman's bad judgment is about to put her in big trouble. But luckily, he says no. He is married to the train, which seems like a good match for him. He rides train, as earlier noted. Oh, my goodness. And one evening, he sees a crime. A woman is forced to cover a murder her husband done. She charms Lantier, and they begin some kind of relationship. But she is a typical femme fatale who is married, and Lantier is a love-mad maniac. So the odds of a happy ending are quite low. Or high, you might say. Happy ending is not likely in this situation. I think I'm, I'm. I'm thinking I'm picking up on what's going on here. So, I see a little bit of ESL. I think. 
I see. As femme fatale, she talks with an annoying baby voice, but her <laughs> baby voice not only says that Lantanir is cute, but also that her husband should be murdered. And if he does not become dead, she intends to date a younger, nicer man. How are things going to end? Will he murder the man, or will his inner woman-hating win? Waste one and a half hour of your life to find out. <laughs> film from film from men, hey. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's some some twists and turns I I had not <laughs> anticipated. No, neither neither would I have. This person also uh, has a favorite uh, five star films for late spring. So, whatever connection you want to make there, uh, they also five starred Lahane, which uh, you know, interesting. Um, some one star films include What Women Want, the Mel Gibson classic. Uh, Criterion Films, and God Created Woman, Alphaville, and The Ship Sails On, all one stars apparently, which is bizarre. Two other bizarre one star films, Mandy, which I didn't love, but I don't think it's one star, and Stuart Little. And then the last one star film, another Criterion, uh, Shake, Otis at Monterey, which is like, you know the Pennebaker, Pennebaker stuff? Yep. I know some people don't love that, but it's like, why would you give that one star if you don't want to watch 20 minutes of Otis Redding playing live? Really simple, dude. Don't watch 20 minutes of Otis Redding playing live. Like, you know what I mean? Why would you rate that one star? I don't get it. I don't get it. And they gave Hoobie Halloween one and a half stars. Oh, what ass! What monstrous assholes! <laughs> and, and when you watch Hoobie Halloween next year, Jared, you'll get it. You'll say, "Wow." How, how could that guy have done that? It's bizarre. This year. Whoa, yes. This is, well, no, I'm 2023 is the year for you. Next year? I see. Yeah. Next year. Okay, uh, one more for you. A little bit further down. Feels for reals. I see. I think this has this person come up before? I, I don't think so. Two okay. stars. The synopsis on the Criterion channel states that this film, quote, earns star Jean Gabin a permanent place in the hearts of his countrymen and that it is a, quote, suspenseful journey into the tormented psyche of a working man. <laughs> so uh, imagine my surprise when instead of a warm story about a working class hero, I proceeded to watch a lurid tale of sex and murder. And hey, I can do lurid, but I could not for the life of me root for, care about, or engage with any of these characters on any level. Hard pass. Um, so feels for reals. Uh... uh so they said they, they don't want to change their top four often because I find my current layout aesthetically pleasing and I'm lazy. In my, I'm lazy. In my world, stories and characters come first. The technical aspects in filmmaking are second. Although I can greatly appreciate direction and cinematography when my other boxes are checked off. And then they have uh, uh, very lengthy descriptions of what each star rating is, like a paragraph at least, at least for each. And then in their half star, they ha they describe what it is, but then they have edit, and it says, "I rated something half a star." Tinto Bros is the howl, and I am absolutely certain it it deserves my poor rating, even though I only watched about twenty minutes. So they say that uh, this person' uh, favorite films are. Picnic at Hanging Rock, Sawdust and Tinsel, Woman in the Dunes, and Yojimbo. And I gotta say, I've been noticing a lot of people who love Picnic at Hanging Hanging Rock, I think claim to like movies more than they actually know what movies are. I've noticed a lot of people are like, I love Picnic at Hanging Rock, and it's like, do you really? Do you hey, really? The, when I first watched that movie, I liked it a lot. And then upon rewatch... I was like, huh, <laughs> what Yeah. What, what happened? I know, I know. This person also gave The Wicker Man one star. Oh, come on. I mean, there's lots of other ones in here too, but that's the one that kind of stuck out most to me. Oh, they gave Gertrude one star. Remember Gertrude, Jarrett? I believe uh, our, our Sam watched that recently. I, I know, he's a big Gertrude boy. He is. He's this person also gave Toby Dammit a half a star, Jarrett. Half a star for Toby Dammit. One and a half stars for Halloween 3? Okay. Come on. All right. Come enough. On. Enough feels. One and a half stars for Amarcord? Come on. <sighs> Come 
man. There's farting in that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's not to like? It's not to like. Well, RJ, any parting thoughts for our man Jean Renoir and or his boy Jean Gabin for that train, that beautiful train? All I know is I would have liked more trains, and I'd say more, but <clears throat> I know I'm going to see both of these sons of bitches probably soon. I haven't looked into it, but I know that there there will be some Jean Renoir, Jean Gabin thing coming up <laughs> real soon. So he's going to get you. I know. It's like John Criterion just couldn't like he's just like John Gabin, Jean Renoir, Jean Gabin, Jean Renoir, Jean Criterion, Jean Criterion. John Renoir, and you go, all right, all right. Yeah, we're um, where are we at with him? I'm, I'm going. To I'm taking a peek because uh, I'm curious. Oh boy, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure wow. there will be one within the next six months. No, 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 no. This is the last time we see him for a very long time. No, come on. Yep. We 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 haven't had. Have we ever had a six months break where we haven't had a Jean Renoir film? Well, this this is actually like Kurosawa, where there's a big drop off now. Huh? They got them all out of the way and they're done. The, it's kind of the end of an era. This is it. Guess guess when uh, guess how many movies will be till we see Jean Renoir again? According to well, a, a cursory glance I'm doing here. Well, before you said anything, I would have guessed like. Like five months, so I don't know what is that like four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty-four, like thirty movies <laughs> is what I would have guessed. I think it's like three hundred and twenty. Holy shit, that's pretty big, I guess. It's a big gap. Usually, it's a big one. You know, maybe even actually four hundred. Like it's a lot. God damn. No. Yeah, it's way. Well, fuck. Uh, at least the curse is broken a little bit. We can get away from fucking. Jean Renoir and Kurosawa for a while. Yeah, but for a while, I'm sure Bergman will. I mean, it's like those; those are the big boys. Mm-hmm. But same with Fellini; like they kind of drop off on Fellini stuff too. Well, eventually, there's an end point for those guys, right? Eventually, they'll run out. <laughs> eventually. Well, I mean, I don't know if Bergman and Fellini and Kurosawa do a team up soon, then it'll be a different story, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, Bergman. We don't see again till Spine Four Twelve. So he's like the next guy. But yeah, like Renoir. My goodness, Spine for Seven Forty Six. Oof. Oof. Yep. Okay. I mean, I'm fine with that. I'll live. <laughs> I'm willing to accept that. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's Bergman and Kurosawa will be back to back when we see them again. Oh well, of course. That doesn't surprise me at all. No. <laughs> but you know. <sighs> well, yeah. Hey, there you go. After the break. Hmm. Um, I don't know. RJ's dead. He stabbed him. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a jump off that train. I'm sure I had my reasons. Was it alcoholism? <laughs> it was uh my grandfather and my father and my father's father father. And their they're, alcoholism? Yeah, they're they're demons. That that's how it works. I've got and no choice. I got a no choice. It's the beast. Gamblor and alcohol lore. They uh they come into my family of the the genes, the heredity. <laughs> 